Antonio and welcome to Park Bench. I'm Michelle Martinez, your host for this episode. We're here to share all the great things happening with your San Antonio Parks and Recreation Department for the months of November, December, and January. Let's get started. On this episode, we'll unplug with nature, check in with the natatorium, learn about holiday camps, take a behind the scenes look at the MLK March, hear about new amenities coming to a park near you, and guess what? Our annual Jam and Jams fruit and nut tree adoption is around the corner. Kelsey, thanks for joining us today. We're really excited to talk about how residents and especially our youngest residents, kids, um, can unplug with nature. Can you tell us why it's important for, um, for people to unplug with nature? Yeah, it's nice to get out of the day-to-day -day, uh, stress, stressors and really get to enjoy the outdoors. It can help kids be active, reduce obesity, and it also creates creative kids when they're outside playing and, and imagining and um, they get to learn about the world around them. And Parks and Recreation is the, act, the, the perfect place to unplug with nature. Tell us about our natural areas and some of the best spots to unplug. Yeah, so we have nine natural area parks. Currently we're at Phil Hardberger Park East. Uh, we also have Friedrich Wilderness Park, Medina River Natural Area on the south side, and Eisenhower Park. Uh, those are our larger parks that people can visit. Um, they have a multitude of different trails. Some of them, such as Medina River, has campgrounds or fishing opportunities. Uh, you can hike and bike, um, and there's greenway connections through many of them. Um, and I know there's tons of activities and things that um, residents can do at all of those natural areas parks. Let's talk about some of the free things that if a family, you know, it's a beautiful weekend and they just say, I want to go out and explore the fun at a natural area. What are some free activities that they can do? Well, if you don't have any equipment or anything, you can just come out and hike or, or walk a dog. Uh, you can also bring a bike out, um, fish. We have classes every weekend pretty much for families to enjoy. We have those throughout the week as well, and uh, people can kind of just get out and explore, even if they just want to find a nice spot to have a picnic. What are some of the, your regular classes that you have? I know you offer lots every month, so maybe tell us a couple. Uh, during the week, we have a lot of Growing Up Wild and Project Wild classes for, for young kids to kind of have an outdoor learning experience. Uh, we also, right now, are really focusing on uh, pollinator classes, uh, that people can participate in and then we have nature hikes. Sometimes um, it's just focused on nature and other times um, we, we're integrating art and, and other activities and being outside. And I think we're, we're sneaking up on one class right now. Let's go check it out. <laughs> well, it's important for children to be outside and unplug and be out in nature because there's been research that says that they're happier, healthier, and smarter. Um, outdoor activities provide hands-on activities and free play, and just being out in nature helps children to grow to be better adults. So every Saturday here at Phil Harburger Park, there's something educational uh, outside uh, programs. I think that everybody should bring their kids out to the park. Again, I think that it sparks their imagination and their creative side. I think that it teaches them to be social and start interactions with people they might not necessarily start interactions with if we were just inside all day. Tell us a little bit more why like natural areas are so important and how they're spread out throughout San Antonio because I don't know that you know a lot of our viewers know that. Yeah, so we have natural areas throughout the city of San Antonio. They're great not only because San Antonio is such a unique place. There's so many diverse plants and animals that we're helping to conserve. But they're also a place to just kind of uh, get away and, and relax and feel like you're not in the hustle and bustle of the city. For more information, visit our website and follow us on social media. Swim camp, swim with the elves, lifeguard recruitment, and a food driver, just some of the upcoming activities happening at the San Antonio Natatorium. Let's hear all about it from Veronica Rodriguez and Bonus. We're taking you to the San Antonio Food Bank to hear how our partnership benefits the community and so many others during the holiday season. So Veronica, we're here at the Natatorium. Um, the Aquatics Division always has such great activities and events um, at the Natatorium. Tell us what's happening in November. Of course, we do our annual food drive, which begins at November 1st through the 30th. Anytime anybody wants to come in and swim, um, we'll waive their admission fee for uh, two non-perishable food items. 
So if people donate cans, where does that go to? But all our donations are taken to our local food bank, the San Antonio Food Bank, and we do multiple, we hope to do multiple drop-offs in the month. Yeah, in past years, you all have, um, you usually weigh them in, right? Weigh all the cans in? Yes. And in past years, you've exceeded every year, I think. Right? Yes, we always try to beat our, our previous number. Okay. Um, so we're always trying to, to do more, and it's, it's really good because it benefits the San Antonio Food Bank. We really thank the entire community that helps out all the time. Uh, in times of need, when we need it, uh, again, through the food donations that they make to get into the natatorium, uh, we have a list of 12 most wanted items, and we see a lot of those come in through these types of donations, so uh, we'll, we'll want to make sure that folks are donating the right types of items that people need during the holidays, but that simple donation of two cans to get into the natatorium and, and, and enjoy such a great, important benefit to the community is vitally important to us. It's the holidays, what better way to give back than to the food bank. And then you get something for it too, you get free admission, right? Definitely. Um, so tell us what else is happening in November. So in November, I'm super excited, we're going to be offering our first, our first ever Thanksgiving swim camp. Oh wow. Yeah, so this past year, during spring break, we had our first ever spring break swim camp. Oh, yeah. So now we're taking the same concept, it's three days because the week of Thanksgiving, right. I mean, obviously it's a Thursday, right. um, but the three days that we will be offering our swim camp, we have a, a lot of activity scheduled and a lot of time in the water for the kids. That's awesome. Do you know how much it is? It's three dollars a day okay. per child, uh -huh. um, and it's all day. It meets um, from morning till the evening at seven thirty. I believe the pickup is five thirty. And it, in November, during the week of Thanksgiving, when kids are out of school. Um, that's when we're going to offer our first lifeguard training class okay. so kids can start um, preparing for lifeguarding. Sounds like there's a lot of great things happening in November. Tell us about December and January. We're excited to bring back our Swim with the Elves event in December. It's going to be a lot of fun. Of course, swimming, a lot of games in and out of the water. Santa will be here. It's going to be a great time. Yeah, so for more information, residents can just um, can go to the website at safeparksnetwork.com. Yes. So what's happening in January for the new year? So we'll continue with our uh, sessions for group swim lessons, private swim lessons, our um, aqua fitness classes, and then also our fitness in the park classes. So through fitness in the park, we'll offer free uh, water aerobics classes, free lap swim, a free aqua boot camp, and then aqua Zumba. So the natatorium's a great place if somebody wants to start the new year off getting fit and healthy. Natatorium is the place to be. All our programs offered here at the Natatorium are also posted online. And if anybody needs any help, they can just come down here. We're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and on Saturdays from 11 to 7. And your pool is heated? Yes, our pool is heated. <laughs> um, we compromise at 83 degrees. Um, and we try to keep it like that year round. Yeah, that's great. So it's cold outside, but you can still get a swim inside at the natatorium. Yes. Thank you, Veronica. You're welcome. For more information, visit our website and follow us on social media. Here's a little trivia for you. When is the best time to plant a tree in San Antonio? We'll tell you the answer soon, but first we'll hear from our tree experts on two upcoming events you don't want to miss out on. Kathy, tell us what event is happening that the Urban Forestry Division is planning for in November. So this November, on November 2nd at Almost Basin Park, from 9 to noon, we're going to have Arbor Day for SA event. So this is to celebrate trees and nature in our city. We are going to have some tree climbers do a demonstration of how they work and move in a tree. We're going to have a kids tree walk where they can kind of walk out on logs and limbs um, as a tree climber would. Uh, we're also going to have some nature play areas, uh, some activities, some crafts for kids to do, as well as uh, Tim Womack from Tree Circus is going to do a presentation, kind of an interactive education presentation to get people excited and aware about trees and how trees work. So this is in November and this also kicks off the best time to plant a tree, is that correct? That's correct. Here in San Antonio, with our hot weather, the best times to plant a tree are when the weather starts to cool down. So November, December, January, February, those are great months to plant a tree. At Arbor Day, we'll also be having a tree adoption event. So if you're ready to plant a tree, you can go home with one that day. Ross, we just heard from Kathy. She told us about Arbor Day. What's happening in January? So every January we do a really awesome event called Jam and Jams. It's our annual fruit and nut tree adoption. It's by far our most popular event of the year. 
and we do it the last Saturday of January. This year it will be January 25th. Tell us a little bit, I know it's, one of, it's, a, it's a very popular event, people look forward to it, um, and people line up really, really early. So tell us what kinds of trees you have. Yeah, so getting early is the key to this event. We usually start by 8 o'clock, but in the past we've had people starting getting on site by as early as 5, 6 wow. o'clock in the morning. We definitely recommend public get there by 7 in order to ensure they get a tree. Uh, generally we'll bring up to 1,500 different trees. Um, 15 different varieties of fruit trees that are all well suited to San Antonio, grow well here. Uh, we bring things like lemon, lime, orange, avocado, pomegranate, apple, peach, pear, plum, pecan, just to name a few. Um, so we bring lots of different varieties and, and again all of them are well suited here for San Antonio. It's a really special event and working um, at nurseries uh, these trees would go for sometimes 30, 40, 50, 60 dollars that are given away for free. They put trees into the hands of people that otherwise might not be able to afford them. And that is what I love the absolute most. Tell us why trees are so important. We know that trees are valuable from just the shade that they give, lowering energy costs, cleaning our air, cleaning our water, uh, and just the social services that they even, that they even provide. The fruit trees are, 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 are an effort that we started about 10 years ago with Jam and Jams. And it was out of an effort to try to, to increase some food security for some of our residents that may not have access to good fruits and, and healthy type fruits. And so uh, it was an idea that plant a tree, you're not only going to get the benefits and the value from that tree, but you're also going to be able to, to get something throughout the year, a, a fruit that's nutritious and healthy for their family. And so I know Jam and Jams is in January. What other tree adoption events do you have? So we start our adoption events all throughout the fall. We start usually in, in September and we go all the way through, um, say, April, May. Um, all in total throughout the year, we'll give nearly 10,000 trees away at many different events. And so there's lots of opportunities to come out and get trees, whether it's a native or ornamental type tree, shade tree, or whether it's a fruit tree. Uh, we recommend if people want to find out what events we have going on in whatever part of town, they can follow us on social media at SA Parks and Rec. Hi San Antonio, get ready to explore the fun with us. Check out three things to try this month. Tis the season to give back. November is here, and if you bring two non-perishable items to the San Antonio Auditorium or Barrera Fitness Center, receive a one-day free admission. All items will be donated to our friends at the San Antonio Food Bank. Our very own community center participants and students have talent. We're celebrating their hard work at a special event, the Gallery Art Exhibition. Check out a variety of art including drawings, paintings, photography, sculptures, ceramics, and mixed media. We're celebrating you San Antonio at our Get Fit SA finale. Join us November 30th at Lady Bird Johnson for free fun. Register the entire family. Visit saparksandrec.com for details. San Antonio Parks and Recreation employees work year-round to ensure we are improving our residents' quality of life through equitable access to parks and recreation activities for diverse experiences. We have over 250 parks in San Antonio. I always tell my volunteers there's always something to be done. And so it's a way to have a voice when you come out and you're starting to sweat for a good cause. So our events, most of them are ages five and up, so the whole family can come out and they can sweat for a good cause, volunteer, and be part of our team. Parks and Recreation offers year-round programming and outdoor activities for families to connect with the outdoors and nature in the heart of San Antonio. With 40 major trailheads and neighborhood connections, residents can walk, run, hike, and cycle around the city. My role with the department is to uh, create and research programs uh, to take out to our community centers. It's important for our kids to interact with other kids in the community. It's important for the kids to come and participate. It helps their self-esteem. Uh, it helps them uh, do better in school um, and to meet new friends. Team sports give local youth and adults the chance to develop their skills, make friends, and stay active. Sport leagues are offered year-round for various ages and include basketball, soccer, and volleyball to name a few. I love our parks because it's a great opportunity to get out there and exercise while having fun with your community. So we engage all different areas of San Antonio 
to try and get everyone to come out and be active and live a healthier life. Parks and Recreation offers free group swimming lessons over the summer. In 2019, our swim instructors taught over 2,400 participants how to swim, an important life-saving skill. I've been with the San Antonio Parks and Recreation Department for almost 17 years, and I truly, truly love our parks. Our department goes out into the community participating in festivals, putting on our own shows, and one in particular is the Bravo Show in the summer, where not only our locals get to attend, but tourists get to see what San Antonio is all about. Parks and Recreation hosted our annual summer youth program at 56 sites across San Antonio with over 4,600 participants. Parks and Recreation also hosts spring break and holiday camps for youth. Los adultos y las personas mayores también quieren divertirse. El Departamento de Parques tiene cuatro centros para adultos y adultos mayores donde los residentes pueden mantenerse activos, aprender una nueva habilidad y hacer nuevos amigos. Our team lives, works, and plays in the communities we serve. Our work is diverse and fulfilling. We encourage everyone to explore the fun with San Antonio Parks and Recreation. On January 19, 1987, the commission in the city of San Antonio held its first official Martin Luther King Jr. March. Years later, San Antonio sees hundreds of thousands in attendance and has become one of the largest MLK marches in the nation. We're sharing how the Parks and Recreation Department proudly supports this effort behind the scenes every year so that our community can come together to honor Dr. King's legacy. Mr. Davis, thank you so much for joining us today. I know you're um, a former MLK commissioner and you're the 2020 um, lead for the MLK March. Um, can you tell us how you got started and how you got involved with the MLK March? Well, I guess I got started back in 87 when the city's re uh, re relationship with the uh, commission grew and the, committee, the, the city became our major sponsor and, and supporter. And, I, and me working with the YMCA here in the park, I guess the commission decided to put those two together and they, they put me to work, put it like that. So uh, I've been with them ever since, since about 87. So since 87 to today, how have you seen, seen it grow? Well, it has grown tremendously. Uh, no one could have anticipated this. Uh, when we were in the plaza on Houston and, and, and the Brown Fools, we still would culminate with about 50, 60,000 people. And once we moved to this park, the doors opened. Open, <laughs> it yeah. just blew up. Uh, and so when they did that, it was a great, it was a great fit. It just really was. Hi, Kevin. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we're here at MLK Park near where the march begins. Um, Parks and Rec plays a huge effort in this. Can you tell us a little bit about what Parks and Rec does in your role? Well, my role is essentially to make sure that the park is ready to accept hundreds of thousands of guests and to make sure it's clean when the event is over. This is one of the largest MLK marches in the entire U.S. I believe 200 to 300,000 people um, show up. Um, so tell us a little bit about the prep it takes and kind of walk us through that. I and several other of my colleagues attend planning meetings hosted by the MLK Commission. And there we learn how we can best help them have a successful event. So there are multiple divisions um, within Parks and Recreation who help with this effort. What are some of those divisions? Well, probably Michelle, it's better to ask which divisions don't help. <laughs> but uh, you, we see a heavy um, presence of our trades division. So you have carpenters, you have plumbers, you have electricians. We have the cleaning green team. Uh, prepping the park, making sure that it's ready to accept the guests. We have the Volunteer Services uh, Division uh, help us get parks ready and facilities ready along the route. So really it's multiple divisions helping prep for this event. Can you tell us a little bit just your experience on the commission where you've had people just support you in, in this effort? Yes, uh, if you look when we do start marching, they are arm in arm uh -huh. and, and, it's, and it's a family atmosphere. Uh, everybody feels safe and comfortable. But what it, the main thing that this, this commission is doing is supporting the legacy of Dr. King. And we want to do our efforts to keep that dream alive. Because it's not for just African American people, it's for all uh, uh, what Dr. King was uh, teaching. So 
Uh, it's just a great atmosphere in San Antonio is just unique. I tell everybody that I talk to, <laughs> they're just unique and, and they come out in droves to support each other and, and I just love the city. For more information, visit our website and follow us on social media. Hi San Antonio, get ready to explore the fun with us. Check out three things to try this month. Ready or not, the holidays are here. We have you covered while school is out. We're now enrolling for our Parks and Recreation Holiday Camps. Visit saparksandrec.com for more information and participating locations. Swim with the Elves is back and better than ever. This event will definitely spread holiday cheer at the San Antonio Natatorium. Visit saparksandrec.com for all the details. holiday treats and desserts with fitness. Parks and Recreation offers hundreds of free fitness in the park classes every month. There's something for everyone. Find this month's schedule at saparksandrec.com. For more information on our three things to try, visit saparksandrec.com. With hundreds of projects going on across the city, we want you to be the first to know about a couple of Parks and Recreation projects that are happening. Many of them have received community input, and Sandy Jenkins is here to tell us about all three. So Sandy, we're here at Lincoln Park, and it looks like we have a couple of new amenities added to the park. Tell us about it. We do. Actually, we're standing underneath the brand new pavilion with six picnic tables, and then across from this wonderful new pavilion is a brand new playground. And the playground is for all ages, and it also incorporates musical equipment, which is something that I know that children really love is music. And then we have our wonderful splash pad that's just up the hill, which opened last March. The splash pad was actually donated uh, with a million dollars by Charles Butt. And then in addition to the splash pad, we also have a covered basketball court and covered bleachers for people to play baseball, softball, whatever they may want to play on the new field. So it's, it's just an exciting transformation. So tell us when um, all the new amenities will be available for the public. This is actually going to be finished and open to the public in November. So it's just perfect timing. We have wonderful weather in November and December. So it's getting a little cold, but then spring break, the splash pad will open again, and then uh, everyone will be able to come and enjoy the fun here at Lincoln Park. So let's talk about Dawson Community Center. I know there's some more amenities coming to that community center. Can you tell us what's happening there? Yes, we're gonna have a brand new basketball court with a shade cover with new lighting. So people can play basketball at night and during the summertime, you know that's really important. <laughs> uh, so that's something that's going to be coming with bond improvements. But what I'd like to tell you about is the Spurs have actually offered a computer lab oh, that's wow. inside of the community center. And so you have free internet, free computer usage, so kids, adults, anybody can come out and enjoy the computer lab that was funded by the Spurs. That's amazing. Go Spurs Go, right? They're the best community partners I think we can have. Yes. Um, and so when can we expect that to be open? The computer lab will actually be open um, in October, uh, so it will be available to the public during regular hours. And Dawson Community Center has a summer program, so the hope is that kids can play inside because there's an indoor basketball court there, but then they could also be on the computer learning things during the summer as well as doing everything that a summer camp usually does. So it's going to be some really nice improvements and I think that between Dawson and Lincoln, I think there's something for everybody. That's great. And I know we wanted to talk about one more park that has another great amenity coming to it. Normoyle Park? Yes. Normoyle Park has a senior center uh, that's also integrated with regular community center. So it's got a wonderful community center, but one thing it doesn't have is an exercise station. And so an exercise station is actually going to be offered by AARP. It's going to be open December 10th and it will offer exercise opportunities without having to go to the gym, so you don't have to pay a membership, but anybody of any age can use this exercise station. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna offer a full body workout on six different stations. If the community wants to see a certain amenity or you know, has needs in the community, how can they go about making that request? How does that work? Well, they could call the Parks Department or they could send an online inquiry and I actually keep a file of anything that people want to see in their park, whether that's lighting, 
a pool, a splash pad, a playground, whatever that might be, I actually keep a file. And so when funding opportunities come available, like bond funding, then we actually compile all of those along with actual public meetings. So we have meetings where people come, but we also do take online phone calls. We take all of that input and then we put it into a package when the bond comes, which will be in 2022. Wow, that's exciting. Thank you, Sandy. There's a lot of great things coming to all of our parks, I know, soon, so thank you. Thank you, Michelle. For more information, visit our website and follow us on social media. Explore the fun with our Thanksgiving and holiday camps. Each camp offers a variety of activities to keep kids busy while out of school. We promise fun is guaranteed. Let's hear more from Sarah Sharp. So Sarah, um, the holidays are just around the corner. Um, tell us about Thanksgiving camp. Okay, cool. Well, um, you know, the kids are out of school, so they need something to do. Parents still have to go to work, so we're open. We're there Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We have camp from 7.30 to 5.30 at centers throughout the city. Uh, it's $3 a day. They get uh, lunch and snack. We'll have a whole lot of different activities for them to do, uh, usually Thanksgiving themed, maybe something like a turkey tag. They might make a turkey out of some beads and use their hands, you know, all those little things that they like to do. Some science experiments, nature, we'll keep them in, we'll take them out, they're going to have fun, um, meet new friends, and, and just enjoy themselves while parents have to go to work. Lunch and snack are included with a $3 fee, and that's $3 per day per child, and it's for ages 6 to 14 year olds. So after Thanksgiving camp, we have holiday camp, right? Yes. Same thing, and it's the same kind of thing. The kids are out of school. Uh, we know parents have to work, so it gives them an opportunity to come to our centers, enjoy themselves. We'll have a lot of, it's more of the winter themed kind of uh, activities. So it might do like snowball fights uh, inside the center. It's kind of a dodgeball game. Um, but we do these activities, we theme them for the winter holiday. How old do you have to be to attend camp? Okay, it's a uh, six to 14 year olds, once again. Um, and it is with $3 a day. It'll have a uh, lunch and snack. We'll have more information on our website once we narrow down the days. That way we'll fit within the school calendars and that way the parents will know when they can come to our community centers. I like Parks and Recreation because um, I work Monday through Friday. I'm not off in the summer, I'm not off during Thanksgiving, none of the holidays. So the camps are very convenient, they're very just helpful. The kids like to be here, they like to play basketball, do all the events, activities, everything that they offer here. So parents can register online, right? Yes. You need assistance, you can go into a community center, anyone can walk you through it, they can help you out. We have a, a, on the saparksandrec.com, you just log on, view and register for classes. You can pick the center you want to go to. You can pick the day of the week. You don't have to go to every single day if you don't want to. Um, so same thing for Thanksgiving camp. If you're there Monday um, and you want to take Tuesday and Wednesday, you want to take the kids so you can prepare the food, you know, you can do that. So you get to pick and choose whatever days that you want to go. So it's great that we have we offer these camps for the kids during the day, but it's also a relief for families and for parents, right? Oh, absolutely. Parents have to go to work and the kids are out of school. So it's like, you know, what are they going to do? And you don't want them to leave them at home all day. Bring them to us. They'll have fun. Uh, they'll meet new friends or they'll meet the friends again that they met last year at camp for the returning campers. They, like, they get so excited to see the person that they met the year before, their friend that they met the year before. So they can come out, they can have fun. We'll try and make it so they do a whole lot of different activities throughout the day. The parent can come pick them up, feed them dinner, and put them to bed. They're going to be so tired. They're going to have so much fun. So yeah, I think it's a definite advantage for parents. It's great. And so people can find out more information at saparksandrec.com? saparksandrec.com. Thank you. For more information, visit our website and follow us on social media. Know your location. The right tree for the right location is important. Call 811. Check for utility and communication conflicts in your area. Dig a shallow, wide hole. The hole should be twice as wide as the root ball or pot of your tree and just deep enough for the root ball to sit slightly higher than the surrounding soil. Remove the tree from the container and place it in the hole. Make sure that the tree is at a good level. Replace the original soil around the root ball of your tree. Thoroughly water your tree after planting. Place mulch around the root ball, taking care not to place the mulch on the trunk of the tree. Water the tree three times a week for the first month, two times a week for the next two months, once a week for the rest of the growing season. After the first year, reduce watering to one to two times a month for the next growing season. Enjoy watching your tree grow. San Antonio, get ready to explore the fun with us. Check out three things to try this month. Is volunteering on your New Year's resolution list? If so, we have you covered. 
The Parks and Recreation Department is always looking for organizations and residents to help clean, maintain, and beautify our city parks. Contact our Parks and Recreation team today. Take Fido to the dog park. Our dog parks offer space to play, catch, chase, and make new friends. Looking for separate large and small dog parks? We have those too with play equipment and water fountains. Everyone needs exercise, including your furry friends. Let your dog play and bark in the park today. Find a park at saparksandrec.com. Our annual Jam and Jams Fruit and Nut Tree Adoption event is back. Line up early to get your pick. Apple, lime, pear, and lots more. Visit saparksandrec.com for a complete list of trees and more details. For more information on our three things to try, visit saparksandrec.com. That's our show. Thanks for watching. To learn more about everything you saw today, head to saparksandrec.com. See you next time.